A few weeks ago, a particular tweet got our attention. Someone from the community had spun up a little app to help them parse through some JSON data and was looking for feedback. After a little bit of chit chat, we ended up adding this tool called Sifty as officially supported integration into web page test. Now, here to launch a brand new series we're calling Under the Hood is the author Brian Ramirez in a conversation we're calling Sifting Through Sifty. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to an episode of Under the Hood uh, where I'm just going to hang out with some friends of mine, people I know, people I've met, etc., etc. And today we have a very special guest. Well, to tell the truth, they're always special. Either way, Brian, good morning, or should I say good afternoon? Yeah, good afternoon to you, Henri. Yeah, my name is Brian Ramirez, and I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Hey, it's only right, you know, and uh, first of all, thanks for your time. Uh, I, I realize it's midday uh, in Germany, which is where you're at right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's early morning here. So, I mean, don't worry about me. I'm just getting my day started, but I'm actually interrupting yours right now. Yeah, Either no way. Uh, well, thank you. Either way, uh, we're here to talk about you, essentially, and, you know, something that you've been building. So uh, if you have a, a few moments, if you just want to introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, like I said, my name is Brian. Um, yeah, I'm originally from a place called sunny California. And about 20 years ago, I moved to a place called cloudy Germany. So um, yeah, I mean, I kind of fell in love with Europe uh, back when I was a teenager. And um, yeah, kind of got hooked and, and stayed here for a, a while. <laughs> and uh, ended up studying here. Um, and, you know, having a family and all that. And uh, yeah, started working in uh, the area of yeah UX design. Uh, back then, it used to be called information architecture. Um, then eventually, it turned into UX design. Uh, my focus was more on the conceptual side of things, and uh, yeah, um, also had to work with analytics a lot. So you know, creating reports, um, you know, checking metrics and all that. And uh, several years ago, um, just started, you know, reading about performance and, you know, all the metrics that were coming, uh, coming up and, okay, how do you measure all this? And what, is, what does it mean in relations to um, the user experience? So what is fast um, performance? What does good um, fast loading pages mean um, for, for the users and for the business? And um, can I just you know, ate up all the articles I could find, you know, anything online, all the books, um, just uh, loved the whole topic. Um, also made it to a, a yeah, conference a few years back where you um, actually gave the opening talk, um, Henri, uh, performance now in Amsterdam, loved that. And I, I was so impressed with like the, the whole community, just the, all the people there. I just really felt like I was in my element. So that's awesome. Yeah, so, um, uh, let's see, maybe, a, yeah, where I work now, I work for, um, it's called Reve Digital, um, spelt R-E-W-E. -E. That's um, one of the biggest supermarket chains in Germany. And uh, so I work for their digital division. Um, yeah, actually for the past uh, six years, uh, seven years, I think. And um, yeah, was on the UX team, led a UX team also. Um, yeah, and then I, like I said, I developed my interest in um, performance, and I'm extremely fortunate um, to be able to work on that now full time. So um, not only for the Reva um, website, but also for other websites in the Reva group. So it's a group of, um, you know, they have like tourism, they have, um, yeah, the home improvement mar uh, markets and a whole bunch of stuff. So um, nice, nice. I just try to help out where I can. And uh, yeah, that's where I am now, and I and I really love working on performance every day. So that's awesome. And, and you know, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna sort of uh, take it back real quick to some of your earliest memories um, in terms of uh, reading about performance. Do you remember some of your earliest books or docs uh, around performance that you were like, oh, that was really that's that aha moment? Yeah, um, actually, it was um, looking on uh, Smashing Magazine. They had there was this article series. I forget the name of the author, but it was um, kind of the perceived um, experience of of speed. 
mm -hmm. and kind of really just looking at the um, the user side of it. Okay, how many milliseconds um, you know is considered fast or immediate or responsive and so forth, and kind of building up upon that. And one kind of anecdote that stuck with me the whole time was like saying, okay. Um, you know, you could also improve perceived performance through things like animation or uh, maybe loading things in a different way. Um, and kind of, you know, the, the example is, say, uh, you know, you arrive at an airport. I think there is an airport in Boston or something like that. And, um, you know, there were customers arriving at the airport and complaining about the long waits to get their uh, baggage Luggage. and yes. to pick up everything from the baggage claim. And um, so they uh, had some specialists come in, um, probably some perf folk, and um, they analyzed the situation. They came up with some ideas. And one of the ideas was just to um, move the, um, like so say for example, your airplane arrives um, at a certain terminal and they um, just made sure that the baggage claim was at a completely other end of the hallway. So basically you get off the airplane and you have to walk. So you're kind of distracted um, and so when you get to the baggage claim, then usually your, your stuff's already there. So that whole aspect of just, ah, yeah, I can improve performance by um, maybe moving things around, maybe changing things up. And that, that was one of the biggest things. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, I, I do remember that, uh, that example. And, uh, you know, you mentioned Boston. I thought also it might have been Houston for some reason, but that's an example I do remember where they basically lengthen your, your, your travel time to uh, your carousel. And yeah. so that people weren't there waiting. You know, so yeah. uh, the whole time they may have been sort of like chatting away. And so that, you know, by the time they got to the, the carousel now uh, that the their their route there was lengthened, uh, they could just pick up their bags and take off. So in their mind, they're like, oh, this is perfect. You know, yeah, my, my, my bags got here quickly, you know, yeah, meanwhile, yeah, exactly. they've been there forever or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and from there, you know, I kind of. Um, uh, had a look at skeleton screens and skeleton loading, you know, that was kind of a, a big thing a few years back. Um, you know, it's still relevant now, of course, but um, like from there, it was kind of just realizing, ah, okay, it's not just the, you know, the, maybe the CSS or whatever we're kind of uh, using to, you know, like shadow puppets. Um, it's actually it involves really the 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 um, underlying page and all the HTML, all the scripts, and all the CSS, and um, just kept going down these rabbit holes. Just kept falling down like like maybe um, the white rabbit, <laughs> and uh, got to where I am now. And that really love love the whole. Uh, I mean, it's ex so so exciting to just see you know like on Twitter you know mm -hmm. every day there's like you know, new ideas, new thoughts. Um, you know, there are always new blog posts on, on the subject. Um, yeah. Exciting. That's awesome. Exciting. And you know, the, the one thing that I do love as well is, um, like performance is everywhere, you know, and especially today in 2020 and beyond 2021, 2022, obviously, um, with e-commerce the way it is, uh, we've been forced into it to an extent as well. So people have been, you know, uh, diligently, hopefully, looking at their e-commerce solutions and, you know, making sure that things are smooth as possible. And when I say it's everywhere, I say it's everywhere because, you know, you are working at a, you know, what seems like a, a national grocer, uh, you know, vegetables and, you know, cereal and milk, you know, and all on a screen. But this is very important to you and your company as well. So, you know, I, I love hearing the fact that, you know, there are case studies from, you know, the very sort of seemingly mundane um, sort of businesses that we take for granted, but they have these challenges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, so true. it's uh, no, it, it's great to see. Now, um, now that you're working on performance singly for full time and, uh, you know, you've run in, you know, obviously to some little challenges here and there. And, you know, I remember when you tweeted out um, your little, uh, your little authored, uh, I believe uh, it's called Sifty. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, I remember it, it caught our attention because obviously you talked about uh, using sort of web page tests on the hood. Um, why did that come about? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I might have to, back up just a little sure. bit. I mean, one big aspect of uh, my work is also mm -hmm. in relation to um, sustainability. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And that was for me also like kind of bringing two worlds together, like realizing, okay, actually, um, you know, what can I do as a, you know, working in IT um, to maybe, um, you know, help Im- improve things um, and re- help reduce, you know, the effects of uh, climate change and so forth. And um, for me, it was like, okay, performance is actually one of the best ways to just reduce the number of bytes that are transferred. Um, bytes um, basically mean, you know, energy uh, or, or um, kilowatt hours um, in the end. And so um, just looking for that, um, you know, trying to reduce the number of bytes. And so, um, you know, web page test is one of my go-to tools for measuring um, bytes. I mean, of course you can do things like a curl, you know, you can check, um, see how much, you know, how many bytes are downloaded with a document or, or whatever. Um, I find it extremely easy and comfortable to use web page test because I mean, basically just runs tests of, um, you know, loading a web page um, in actual browsers or, or um, emulated browsers um, and just getting the bytes transferred at the end and taking a look at that and seeing what I can basically reduce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so as you sort of, you know, kept that in mind and, you know, what prompted Sifty? Well, uh, Sifty came about because um, actually I, I do reports, um, you know, write reports on how we improve our performance. You know, um, I'm always looking for ways to, you know, uh, improve our performance on our website for um, the supermarket for Reva. Um, yeah, one of the big things, it, well, it's kind of um, based on our architecture. We have a microservice um, architecture. Uh, so we have a bunch of little parts all working together, um, maybe little components loading their own um, scripts or um, style sheets. And um, just seeing that all come together in the end um, on a final page, actually that all comes together when you just load the page and then you see, okay, uh, what's actually loaded in, in the end? Um, do we have any um, blocking scripts, blocking um, style sheets, um, you know, all the metrics? Um, and uh, so what I usually, um, what I did um, originally was, you know, just um, of course go to the web page test, um, you know, punch in some URLs and um, try, you know, different browsers, different settings, um, maybe script some tests um, to, you know, accept cookies. Cause that's a big thing also, you know, um, what's the page experience like, um, you know, first view, um, first view when you add cookies or accept cookies um, and repeat views and so forth. So, you know, plugging all that in um, and uh, I'm a big fan of, you know, comparing tests just to see, okay, what's um, maybe before and after. Um, and also, you know, when you're reporting on performance, um, you know, the whole factor of time and, and changes over time is um, all the more important. So, um, yeah, I was doing that for a while and then I realized, oh, you know what, um, the API is really nice, um, really comfortable to work with. Uh, there was, um, there's the node um, kind of uh, node um, web uh, web page test API, which I used for a while too, but then um, just started working with the REST API and uh, with Python and just um, writing Python scripts to um, initiate tests. Um, it's, you know, really comfortable to work with. I, you know, I thought, you know, it's kind (laughs) of easy. I could, you know, run multiple tests on multiple URLs, um, you know, change maybe some different uh, settings and then um, basically just generate the results and compare the results in the end. Um, So was doing that for a while too. And then, um, yeah, basically thought, oh um, yeah. Why, instead of uh, working with uh, Jason, why don't I just do this in the browser just just for fun just to play around so it's just like um uh, an at kind of an after work idea just you know playing around with um you know loading json files in the, in the browser on the front end and just working with that and um seeing how i could um just display the metrics there um nice yeah i mean you know, feel free to, to spark up a little demo i think i gave you sharing yeah. privileges uh so that people okay. can see exactly what's going on this is a page, a demo page that I did um, recently. Um, let's see. And this is just showing, um, you know, it's just a simple page with uh, two images um, kind of demonstrating, you know, how you can preload 
uh, images, uh, you know, across, um, you know, the Chromium browsers and Firefox. Um, I guess, uh, well, pre preloading is not really working right now on Safari in this case. Um, yeah, but let me just show you what I usually do, like when I'm um, checking out or debugging um, web pages. What I do is, um, first of all, the main thing is I just go into the network um, tab of the dev tools and mm -hmm. reload the page, um, clearing my cache before that. Mm -hmm. And here you see, for example, the, um, the main doc and the two web P's, which are preloaded. Yep. Um, actually, I have uh, some, these are two uh, render blocking things that I just tossed up in the head. Mm -hmm. um, and this is interesting, you know, just comparing this in Chrome, um, compared to Firefox, um, this, the first um, image will not preload um, because it turns out Firefox needs the href in the preload, um, in the, the, the link tag, mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of interesting. And um, yeah, so what I usually do is just check out, oh, wow, okay, what, what kind of images are loading? Um, we got how many bytes coming in? Um, and that's pretty much it. And I, what I do is um, often just uh, sort by size. Um, and then, you know, that always uh, tips me off to, oh, we have, might have a problem with images or really large images or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I just love being able to do this in um, developer tools, you know, either in, in whatever browser, actually. Um, they all have their own uh, particularities, I think. Um, yeah, so that's what I usually do. Like, just right off the bat, taking a look at pages. Um, I usually fire off then a, a web page test. Um, I use um, Alfred a lot. I don't know yep. if you know that tool. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, so, you know, for example, I have a URL here. I don't know if you'll see this on the screen share, but I can just um, do a web page test and then just fire in a um, URL mm -hmm. and it'll load a, it'll load a new um, web page test. Um, Here's a one that already run. Yep. Um, and so I just have a look at, you know, the waterfall and all that. And um, often, especially when I'm comparing tests over time, you know, I always have to go back to these uh, request details. Yep. Um, like say, like um, what I said earlier about the microservice architecture, um, you know, it might be, for example, I'll show you an, an example in a couple of minutes, but um, you know, just working on one little thing, one little component might mean, okay, loading additional um, scripts or less scripts, um, hopefully after. And um, so I always have to go back to this and kind of um, have a look at that. So this is a super simple, uh, simple example because I only have uh, seven requests here. Absolutely. So no big deal, actually. Um, let me show you a, maybe a bit more complicated example. Um, so this is a web page that um, I help work on. Um, yeah, at work, it's a yep. recipe page. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have just a big image here. We just have a lot of um, ingredients, some content. We have some additional recipe uh, boxes um, or tiles. Um, yeah, a teaser, just a straightforward content page. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we have a look at this in web page test, um, and here I got a before and after. Um, and this is where the only change that we had um, was where um, one team uh, reworked the header component. Um, mm -hmm. So our navigation and all that. And then um, after the fact, after they, they launched the, the new header. Um, and so of course we have some layout shifts, some minor issues here, but we see that the page is loading um, sooner. I mean. Yep. It's not um, ideal yet. I mean, we're, it, perform, performance is a constant um, chase, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we do see an improvement here. Absolutely. So, um, you know, of course, I could do this manually. I could go down here. I could see um, the timings, the comparison. I could have a look at the um, requests. Um, so obviously, um, before and after, um, before we were loading more um, requests, um, and after less than that, uh, and also the bytes. Um, and if I want to have a look at, okay, which resources exactly um, did we change or did we get rid of, um, then, then, you know, I have to um, go into the uh, test details, for example, um, scroll down here, 
And um, I could also do, you know, just a browser search of say, for example, a header. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll see it here. Yeah. So we, we, I have a few requests here containing the words head or the uh, string header right mm -hmm. here. Um, so I can compare both, um, you know, for before and after and see, okay, um, do we have less requests or more? How many bytes and all that? And like I said, um, a, a while ago, uh, yeah, I, I wrote a Python script to um, do that. Basically, um, compare test results from web page test. Just look in the JSON and um, export the um, matching requests um, and the metrics as a CSV file. So if, for um, Excel or for um, whatever mm -hmm. spreadsheet you want to use. And um, yeah, so basically that's where I was, and that's when, when I got the idea, huh? Couldn't I mix these two things up together? Just sort of the, um, so we, we have the developer tools, we have the network tab, which is super um, easy to, you know, you can search for a WebP, yep. you can search for a CSS, you can of course filter, sort and all that. Um, and then you have um, web page test, which helps you um, also capture things um, over time. And so that's, um, yeah, what got me here. Um, so it's just a, a, a silly little tool, I guess you could say. It's just, it doesn't do much. It's just all it does is um, you can upload a JSON file. So mm -hmm. um, let me go back to the web page test. Um, here I have a specific test that I run. Um, and if you export a um, JSON file, you can mm -hmm. click on this button, you can download it. Um, I did that in preparation for our um, chat here. Um, so I have, for example, um, let me show you that, that demo that I had at the beginning. So, um, I have a web page test, um, that I load here. Um, and it's just displaying the requests. Mm -hmm. Um, I can sort things by name or, um, by bytes in, which is, mm -hmm. um, always something that I look at. Um, and I see, oh, okay, those are the biggest uh, things on the, on the page. Um, is that a problem? Yes or no. And super, super helpful is um, render blocking. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, you know, I can just have a look at that. Um, of course, with web page tests, I can run um, tests with the repeat view. So I can um, just filter that um, and say, okay, um, I, I can export the whole thing as um, either all the requests or even, uh, or just the selected requests. Nice. Um, yeah. And I just recently uh, updated this um, kind of, nerd alert right here, <laughs> but um, working on the weekend uh, to get that working with, um, with Lighthouse. So okay. an interesting thing is, um, and I just noticed this on the weekend. Okay, so um, this is the result from web page test. Um, so I have seven resources, 125 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. um, if I look at web page or at Lighthouse, um, when I run Lighthouse in Chrome, mm -hmm. um, then I have six requests, 125. And interestingly enough, um, of course, this all depends on what you know you test with, uh, yes, what browser exactly. settings, what what you do um, in web page tests. I try to get it ex as exact as possible um, across the board. Um, there, there's also I can jump to that really quick. Um, web Dev Measure, um, mm -hmm. which also lets you plug in a URL. And um, you get also a, um, let me see if I can show that real quick, um, run an audit here. And it'll also give me basically a Lighthouse uh, test. Mm -hmm. And I can also download the JSON. Um, let's see if it'll do that really fast for us. Taking a couple minutes. But um, yeah, I also uh, downloaded an example here. So running, um, well, just uploading the JSON file from that web.dev measure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You can see here, I got less resources and it's exactly. also not showing the render blockers, which is really interesting. Um, maybe, maybe it's a problem of mine that I'm not um, finding the right um, key in the JSON file. So, you know, it's like, you know, whenever you have like side projects, you always have to uh, see what's working, what's not working. Got to um, update that. Look into that. Maybe it's a problem of mine. Maybe um, you know, maybe I found something that's a, a larger issue. I don't know. So um, it's also it, yeah, it's really exciting to just kind of dig into <laughs> the JSON files to see what all uh, is uh, saved in there. You know, because um, actually the the whole uh, lighthouse. You know, if I go back here 
to the Chrome um, Lighthouse. You know, I can run that again. We got our, um, yeah, here's the web uh, dev mm -hmm. measure. It also looks like a um, Lighthouse thing. I can um, also view the report here mm -hmm. and download the JSON file here um, by clicking up here um, mm -hmm. and save that as JSON. And so if I look at a Lighthouse test um, here, either in the Lighthouse viewer or in my um, dev tools, um, yeah, we don't really see so much in regards to uh, requests. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you have here some information and all that, but you don't have, I mean, it's not the same thing as like in web page tests where you have every single request listed. You have all this really helpful, useful information. Um, so it was kind of exciting just to, have a look at that and see what kind of information I could surface just from the lighthouse uh, tests. Yeah. And um, yeah, I guess one thing that I um, f always found helpful, I mean, there are different tools for different jobs. Um, it's always good to just uh, be consistent to just know, okay, um, what can I really, um, what am I hoping to find out with a certain tool and um, yeah, to go from there. And uh, I mean, it, it, this is certainly, and, and this is what we talk about all the time in terms of, uh, well, obviously, with web page says the amount of data that you're able to surface and, and, you know, try to connect some dots, you know, in, in terms yeah. of, you know, what is happening on your page, you know, what is, um, uh, what is web page test saying in terms of like, okay, well, we can tell you X, Y, and Z in these areas. And then, you know, you can go down and look at some charts, look at some graphs, you know, the speed index and, and, and everything else. Um, but you know, as you said, you know, you actually built your own tool to sort of satisfy a particular need that you were having. And, and you know, that's something that, you know, when you, we tweet, you tweeted that out, we recognized, we're like, hey, this is amazing because, <laughs> you know, we want to remind people that, you know, there is enough data for you to sort of create, uh, you know, essentially what is your personal dashboard of the metrics that you really want to keep a close eye on. You know, yeah, and and you're able to sort of again create this dashboard and have it tell you the story that you want to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what. Um, yeah, one thing I love about web page tests is um, just all the information it exposes. You know, mm -hmm. um, either via um, API or um, you know these uh, results, and just being able to work with that. You know, um, uh, I helped uh, build a. Yeah, a performance dashboard um, using web page test um, in the past. And um, yeah, extremely helpful. Yeah. Oh, maybe one thing I wanted to show you if we still have time. Um, yeah, 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 by all means. Because I um, showed, uh, showed you this uh, page that you know, we're working on and um, the whole before and the after thing um, yep. with web page test. So, um, like I said, we, we had um, improved uh, the header, um, refactored it. And so um, this is how it looks in Sifty if I um, load the web page test results. And I can um, just search for header. And I get these uh, six resources here. Yeah. So this is for, um, yeah, that's, that's for, I, I see, I don't remember if that was for before or after, but basically that's, that's what you can do with it. You know, it's just searching for results. Uh, requests, filtering, um, yeah, stuff like that. So it makes it kind of easy just um, to be able to say, oh, okay, um, we refactored the header. It means we have, you know, maybe now six requests as opposed to uh, 12. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we reduced the amount of bytes by mm -hmm. half, um, maybe even filtering, checking that out. Okay, how many render blockers do we have and so forth? Um, yeah, so that makes it super helpful to report things. That's awesome. And is this something that uh, some of your, your, your team is, people from your team are using? Because uh, obviously you built it essentially for a, a need that you're, you're having, but have you seen people from your team sort of like, you know, play around with it as well? Uh, not yet, but <laughs> that'd be cool if they do. Um, yeah, ah, that's why I just awesome. kind of played around with it on my, my own time and yeah. um, kind of just ask, you know, if anyone, uh, maybe it, other people have similar um, situations where they might mm -hmm. find something like this useful. Yeah, yeah um, love to hear about it. So. No, but and again, I get back to the idea that you're able to build something that's personally important to you and the reports that you want to surface. Um, and and again, you know, like because people will look at a page 
in different ways. You know, there are certain, you know, uh, certainly some metrics that uh, most, if not all, will sort of, you know, keep an eye on. But, you know, you do have your own personal little metrics that you want to keep an eye on closely. Like you said, you know, looking at page weight or, you know, um, resource size right away. So that tells a story or paints a picture in your mind. Uh, and uh, and you've been using Sifty to, to check that out. Now, uh, I also know that, you know, people on Twitter who are pretty, you know, uh, enthralled with this have been uh, asking for a couple feature requests here and there, some suggestions, uh, anything else, uh, anything uh, out of the, those uh, suggestions or tweets that uh, kind of um, got you thinking some more? Yeah, yeah, there was um, there were some really cool ideas out there. Um, one of them was to just kind of have a demo, um, mm -hmm. just be able to click on a button and it'll just load uh, a demo JSON file, just so you can jump right in and understand what is mm. work, you know, what's happening. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a no brainer. I can easily do that. I had to do it uh, when I was building the tool anyway. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'd be one thing. Another thing is maybe. Um, uh, surfacing some more data or some additional data, um, you know, looking at this example again, uh, you know, in the, oh yeah, one little feature I can show you here. I mean, um, it's just, if you look at it and um, when you're um, in the, with dev tools open, mm -hmm. you know, you get all the information here to just, you know, logging the requests, um, nodes and all that stuff mm -hmm. um, and seeing just, you know, it, you can check out the request here, yep. um, you know, just going through this and seeing, okay, ah, uh, this might be helpful, you know, maybe looking at um, gzip total or whatever, or, um, you know, here, of course, it's, it's, I'm not trying to um, copy, uh, you know, the waterfall, um, <laughs> you know, view, and I mean, no way I want to even try and do that. Um, it's more about just, you know, filtering and, and searching for requests. Yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll, you know, have a look at um, maybe some more um, data points that might be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe another idea would be to, of course, um, yeah, I don't know if it's really a, it would provide added value, I guess you could say, but, um, you know, of course, if I'm, uh, you know, I'll go back to this demo page and I'm in the network tab, of course, I can also download this as a um, HAR file. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically I could recreate this, but you know, the question is, okay, so what's the added value in that case? Um, do I yeah. need that? Yes, no. Might be kind of interesting just to um, look into HAR files. I don't really know too much about them. So it's kind of just, you know, learning on the, on, as I go. And um, if there's uh, something that kind of interests me or I'd like to learn more about just trying it out and playing around with it and seeing seeing if it works or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, you know, tools evolve, you know, uh, web page test, you know, today didn't start like it is, um, you know, it, you know, f things were added and, and, and as metrics became uh, available, you know, web page, web page test evolved um, as the, the data was, was made sort of uh, available to to uh for us to to sort of surface so you know these things tend to happen you know like you know tools evolve but again i get back to the idea that you know you've created uh, a dashboard that really serves your personal purpose and you know helps you in your sort of you know workflow and the ideas that come to your mind or, or if you see some some uh, some smoke because they might be fired um, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> no no that that's amazing now um, that that said, you know, for anyone out there who wants to, to kind of find Sifty, um, you know, what's the actual URL? Yeah, so um, it's um, it's under my blog, um, screenspan.net uh, slash Sifty. So awesome. Sifty, like um, as in like I'm sifting through something. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I remember I was like Sifty, Sifty. Okay, I get it. You know. <laughs> um, as well, I was gonna say, uh, da, 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 what was I gonna say? Sifty. Uh, oh, and uh, if they want to uh, catch you on, on Twitter, uh, where where would the uh, what's your your Twitter handle? Yeah. Um. So basically, the same thing, just Screenspan. Okay. Screenspan, or you can, uh, if you go to this site, you can also just um, find a link down at the bottom to reach cool, me. Cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Um, Brian, man, thank you very much for your time.
Oh, you know, I gladly. appreciate it. Uh, I, I was I was definitely delighted to hear about Sifty and and uh, that you could make some time to sort of uh, join us and sort of like go through your story of 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 you know creating this tool again more for your personal needs, but you know the ability to kind of share it and uh, as you did on Twitter. And uh, so for anyone who wants to get in touch with Brian, he gave you his uh, Twitter handle, which is at Screenspan. Uh, and if you go dot net slash sifty you'll be able to uh find the sifty request filter play around with it you know and you could tweet them if you want to uh you know suggest any kind of uh updates that that you think that might be interesting but that said thank you again for joining us brian thank you very much for your time and uh folks we'll catch you a little later